All right, guys. Uh, welcome back. Uh, that was the highlights. So from yeah, from we a couple of weeks ago, we uh, asked everybody to submit uh, to make their own monster for a make your own monster contest. Yeah. And what you just saw was all of the entries that you submitted over Instagram, Twitter, and Discord. So it's done, though. The, the you can't submit anymore. The contest is done for now. You're certainly free to submit fan art but our contest is over hi guys by the way i'm parasonic <laughs> i am one of them i am one of the mods on discord and one and a project coordinator for the monster mayhem nft project and i of course am i'm ko you guys met me a little bit earlier but if you're just tuning in uh my name is ko i'm the uh, general manager over here at Honeycomb. Uh, I, wear, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah, um, yeah <laughs> you'll be <know>. all. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I actually know Miggy from like 2014, 2015. Mm. I first met um, Distort, Miggy. Um, he was still, actually no, I think I met Miggy, that was 2013 Migs. So actually uh, one of our clients fully booked. I'm actually a marketing consultant. Um, and uh, one of our clients fully booked, we did a art event in Ateneo mm. with a with an international artist called Heracut. Okay. And uh, so we were we were um, doing some of their social media and other stuff at the time. And uh, this punk kid showed up shows up and asks one of these uh, artists if he wants to go bomb with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. And then the guy's like, uh, and this is the first time I ever see Miggy. And my first thought is like, wow, what a punk. <laughs> you wanna go hit the streets with me, bro? Yeah, he's like, oh, we're, we're gonna go to Betigo Belmonte. Like, the building's gone. Like, this is how long oh, ago Betigo it is. Betigo Belmonte is yeah, uh, they, one of, I know, across from Kalayan College, I right? Building. I know that building. Um, and uh, yeah, that was the first time I met this sort. And then, like, a couple years later, <laughs> maybe 18 months later or so, uh -huh. uh, Honeycomb organized Art BGC. Okay. All these big murals in BGC. It's another hat I wear. I'm an art producer. Yeah. Um, and we produced a lot of the all of the really nice international murals there. And Distort joined us as a intern, actually. Okay. Yeah, as a, as a painting assistant and apprentice to Kristen Farr, and then the next year with Andrew Schultz. Um, so I think a lot of people in the city had seen his handiwork without really uh, knowing who he was. That was seven years ago now right right right, right. um and well, he's uh, got a pretty distinct style as you can see like the it's got it's a pretty distinct style when you see yeah, it absolutely. you know kind of like it's signature almost oh yeah and and um very recognizable from the start it's one of the things that that really drew me into into his work and then uh after that, we ran the studio in Cobar Expo for a long time. Oh yeah, where he ran that's hidden, where I met you. Yeah, he ran yeah. Hidden Space upstairs and I ran uh, Kendo Creative downstairs. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like kind, kind of all three of us, our existences have kind of been linked through that connection, through that location. Especially um, Expo especially, right? In, in yeah. Cobao, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's funny, all of us are here um, doing this thing that's um, from being punk kids doing this thing that's pretty serious it's yeah. it's currency well, right i I, guess, I suppose that's true but at the end of the day like what we're doing is uh it's still an art it's still an art project it's semi it's semi digital semi semi like uh actual um and i still kind of think of it as still kind of punk to be honest because yeah. maybe okay sure maybe there's a way to purchase and acquire it but we're still doing like we're still working on the fringes of something mm -hmm. And I think even if there is a price attached to the artwork, at the, it's still also like a public art piece because the stuff that's going on the internet is viewable to anybody. I think it's actually, <laughs> with this whole NFT um, movement that's been happening, I feel like it's almost like we've kind of hit a check with the DRM movement. It's like, how can you make art public but still get the artists paid? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, DRM was never a good solution. Like copy, like preventing people from copying stuff. On yeah, when you say DRM, you're space. talking about digital rights management. Digital rights management. That's the stuff right. on your Apple Music before. Yeah, where you couldn't copy from one one uh, from one folder to another because you didn't actually own anything. Yep. Well, <laughs> now you own something, but even that is sort of an ephemeral idea right now. <laughs> Which is very graffiti and street art, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when we when I talked to Miggy about 
when I came to him with this idea and the two of us were discussing how we were going to approach it, we really said, okay, our primary goal is to do something that's like fun, it's cool, and it's art-based. Like really our goal for this. So one of our programs on the Honeycomb YouTube mm -hmm. is called All Things Creative. And that comes kind of like, and that's, you know, we're going to clip this segment out and make it a, a part of All Things Creative. Sure, cool. Where you and I are discussing. Dope, dope, dope. But the theory of All Things Creative is we are covering things that happen inside the space, mm -hmm. inside of Honeycomb. Um, and there are different groups here. Like today, sometimes some of you have heard um, the noise from the esports team. Yeah. Now esports is headquartered here. Yeah. Um, we have Liter of Light, which is, um, which is an NGO doing uh, solar work for um, for. Uh, underprivileged, un communities. underprivileged communities yeah. with no electricity, right? Mm -hmm. Big, uh, uh, big help during the recent typhoon. Yeah. Um, and then we have we have other stuff. And but my theory is that all of these things are creative, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Business is mm -hmm. creative, mm -hmm. right? Action, however you want to uh, execute on it, you're using that that side of your brain as well, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can talk a bit about how the rollout. For, for Monster Mayhem has really been like a creative task for you. Sure. Well, one thing is that it's we really feel that we're it, it's a it's frontier right now. I mean, crypto has been around for a while, NFTs for a couple of years, but it's only now starting to get I would say mainstream atten attention. And there's been a lot of like confusion about it. But the way that I see it is that it's a brand new platform that's rolling out and platforms can be good or bad depending on how mm -hmm. people use it. There's so many ways that you can utilize a platform. Um, but over the last few months, <laughs> well, when I first talked to Miggy, I thought to myself, I'll find someone to do X, Y, and Z. And as I asked around, I realized nobody knew how to do X, Y, and Z. So instead, I went on the internet, I started researching it myself, I got back into my coat, I, I put my coding hat back on, learned how to do things, and talked to friends. I started networking, I started talking to people, and every time I would talk to them about the ideas that we were playing around with, I saw like a spark of creativity from everyone, like everything from how can we approach marketing to um, what can we do with the project itself. Like you could, I could almost feel it in like the chats that, oh, you know what, what if you did this? Get a message like two in the morning, hey, it'd be cool if you did something like that. And it's been enga as engaged as they have been with it. Like I've fed off that creative spark as well. And I think that we have seen a community grow around it. And even the community, I think, is feeling the creative spark um, that you saw it in the, with all the monster submissions, how mm -hmm. people decided to take things and reinterpret it. Um, and the other like, big upside of what we've been finding is like uh, finding other communities on the internet that sort of feel the same way. Uh, other NFT art projects. Um, we've been trying to, we've been starting conversations with them, hoping to build some connections that we wouldn't have otherwise made. We already have a few that are starting to grow. We have Cryptograph, who are pretty cool. They mm -hmm. have uh, like an online canvas that's powered by the Solana blockchain. Um, we there is this other project called Mystic Analyst that was doing like some sort of like. Uh, almost like an augmented reality game, like with riddles and Discord and the internet, like mm -hmm. just gamifying the experience of people. We found um, NF Tabs, which is another like art project that is slow, that will um, programmatically it takes the idea of generative art and then takes it to another level, which is also pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We've just started talking to them; they seem like a pretty cool bunch. Mm -hmm. And like building these bridges, building these connections, seeing what people are doing and what people are uh seeing what people are doing is inspiring i think i think people are just looking for the opportunity to be creative mm. oftentimes yeah. right yeah. like you just need to give um create the outlet mm -hmm. right like the monster uh, the the competition is a really good example yeah is that there's a parameter for here's what here's kind of like the guide for what we're expecting uh-huh and then run with it. And yeah. people ran with it in completely different directions. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, we saw some really interesting pieces come out. Like every, we've 
obviously there were a lot of digital pieces, like digital paintings. We also got some um, real life work that was just drawn out. Um, we also, one of Wicked East, who hosted our Jackbox tournament earlier, our Drawful tournament earlier, she made hers out of, um, she did like 3D, it's almost like a sculpture, but like with um, like grade school teacher materials. Mm -hmm. So she made a monster out of like string and buttons and stuff like that. And that was great. And I think the range of it is so, uh, the range of engagement, it's so good. I, you know, that first week especially, I was like, when after the previews had come out, I was thinking to myself, like, oh, I'm nervous, this is going to get picked up, what's going to happen? And then I went, and then I was browsing through Instagram, as one does, and saw the submissions for the Mayhem project, and I was like, okay, we're on to something. Mm -hmm. This is something. This, the... With people responding like that, that's 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 not you can't fake that. <laughs> I think one of the things that I really like about this project is that the the treatment for a lot of crypto and NFT mm. is generation of alpha, right? A, a, um, an investment piece that mm. that generates income, yeah. right? That's why people are trading and flipping it. Yeah. But when you're starting to deal with artists that are coming from a body of work, yeah. Right, like all what you guys are doing is just a digital version of this is my this is my monster, oh. and I own this one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, why don't you talk a bit about how how you approach that, and instead of it being instead of approaching okay. it as like here's a way to make a ton of money. Right. 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 It's here's a way to acquire value. Uh, I guess. Well. What I've noticed with the people who are, who I've been chatting with in their community and things like that, like a lot of them seem to be keen on the idea that they are buying a piece of artwork, mm -hmm. and they are, it, and they are, um, they are buying a piece of artwork, and I feel like a lot of them are intending to hold on to it as sort of like a piece of their personality. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking a lot about the idea of selling artworks that are basically profile pictures. And the endowment effect mm -hmm. of how, sure, there are all these profile pictures out there, but this one is mine, and therefore this one is me. And people have sort of ascribed their identity on, on top of that. And yeah. I think that that's sort of a big thing about, um, that's sort of like a big psychological thing that's been happening with NFTs. I'll say this. At the start of, at the very, very start of this project, I didn't understand how many kinds of NFTs there were. There are like clubhouse type of stuff. There are the play to earn kind of games. There are the um, the ones that you hold on to just because it, it's expensive and therefore it's like wearing a Louis Vuitton jacket or something, mm -hmm. showing off how much money you got. Um, but you know, we we sort of just decided, okay, look, this is an, this is an art project. What we are going to sell, what we are going to, the way that we're going to give value to people. So we're going to give them more access to more of this art. Mm -hmm. And even with our longer term goals of um, even with our longer term goals, let's say if we're able to cobble together the game, our idea is to get people into the brand, part of and experiencing the art, bring them I, I wrote in the copy that the game would bring the monsters to life. And it would be just another way for people to interact. So you guys are planning on doing a game. Yeah, that's very late on our roadmap. Everything about the game is based, is uh, dependent on how well the three mint waves do. Okay. But being able to put it together, the level of production that we're able to create, all of that is dependent on how successful the project is. But yeah, we are thinking about a game. So what you're seeing is, if the project is successful, there will be a game. Yeah, the the level. So now you're busted. Like, if the project's successful, sells out, and all that stuff. You don't do the game. They can just go on YouTube and see. Yeah, well, where's, where's my game? So one of the reasons one of the reasons that you know we're doing we're doing this this launch party is one it's a one it's a statement about an, about what we're doing. And the other thing is to show every is to with crypto being decentralized the way it is and NFTs being the way it is. There are a lot of people who have fly-by-night scams. Mm -hmm. They're going to present you a brilliant piece of uh, with like a white with like a white paper that's all vaporware. So in, in two years, there's no game. 
This was a fly-by-night scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a call. But it's not, like, right? <laughs> I, we are, we're here to show that we're, we're liable to what we're going to do. And with as far as I'm concerned, the way that we're going to approach the game is, depending on the, depending on the success of the project, that's how complex we can make the game. Gotcha. If we, can get, if we are able to do really well, it, 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 it's a production budget, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, but our idea is really, it, the, the game would be a way to bring the monsters to life, Give our backers a new way to interact with a new way to interact with the art, a new way to engage with the brand, and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's one of the that's one of the reasons why why I was interested in the project is because the roadmap is long, right? It looks like you guys kind of have um, somewhere you want to bring it and a way to continue bringing value yeah. to early NFTs. Yeah, yeah right. So that's yeah. why you would want to get in on the party early because those early ones it, you know it's like owning an original Toki Doki right yeah, yeah, or yeah, owning yeah. an original Wetworks or Mumbot right yeah. so Mumbot uh, huge she, she blew up in the NFT space um, yeah I got two, or two uh, Mumbots over here I um, third somewhere around <laughs> yeah they were um, they were uh, I got them mm -hmm. in person mm -hmm. uh, she's been here to Honeycomb yeah. she's a friend uh, and then after these she got into NFTs Okay. So she she uh, she blew up you know, in in the yeah, NFT yeah. space because of that bump from Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. right? So okay. that caused a lot um, a lot of uh, success for her. Um, I feel really great about my physical pieces, mm -hmm. right? Because it was it was early on in the process, yeah. right? Now she's this giant artist yeah. who uh, who everybody in the NFT space knows about, right. right? So that's the thing is that when you're looking at at Monster Mayhem, you're looking at a much larger body of work, yeah. right? And getting in on on Monster Mayhem early mm -hmm. in this first wave yeah. really is kind of, for lack of a better term, a true investment. Yeah, I think so. Um, with I, I've been trying to avoid like hyping up. Yeah, this is going to be worth millions yeah. one day because I don't know how things are going to turn out. But that's not the way that collecting art should work. You should that's find true. the things that you like and have them. Yeah, right. I agree. There are a lot of people who are like annoyed that I'm going to put my art out. Right. Uh -huh. Right. That we have we have toys here. We like to display them. We like to put them in the sun yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but like we want to enjoy them while they're here. So yeah. that's my other thing. Is that like. That's why it's super interesting that like, you want to do like an NFT profile pick kind of thing. Yeah. Because like it's it's wise to have something that you're gonna be using on an ongoing basis. And it's it's something that you can display, it's something that mm -hmm. you can engage with, something that you can look at. I as some also going through all of the stuff, it's and people will be seeing this starting next week, just how like intricate the pieces are of how once you start zooming into the backgrounds, taking out the detail. Like, they may be cartoons, but the level of depth that he did in the digital art paintings are really good. It's nice. really, really nice. Um, well, I just want to just jump back to the game for a quick second. Sure. Um, what we've been, like, there was at one point where we were discussing if we were going to make, like, a play-to-earn game, which is sort of the big hype in, mm -hmm. like, the NFT space right now. But... Um, we sort of, we sort of said that we didn't want to have make turn the monsters into your job. <laughs> yeah. Because we yeah. want we want it. The brand is so fun, mm -hmm. and we want to keep it fun and engaging and accessible for people. So our whole like our whole plan is that what how the game when the game gets put together with any in app purchases or if there's going to be a payment you know a payment involved with it that our NFT holders will start to get a share of those profits. So it's sort of like, our, our look at it is, it's sort, of like a, it's sort of like a share in the Monster Mayhem project. By buying an NFT, they're part of the journey for the next um, six months to a year of like work that we're going to be doing. Or until someone else owns that NFT. Or until someone else owns that NFT, but you know, I, yeah, that's okay. If they, if you need to, if you need to move on, if you want to do something else, go ahead. But we are going to continue to work to cultivate our community. Mm -hmm. We are going to continue to work to provide value to the people who are most engaged with us. Uh, we are hoping to. Re we have done the starting work at building a community on our Discord, and uh, you saw them earlier joining our games and things like that. 
and we're trying to make that into a proper regular thing and find when we're looking to find a way to use our platform to bring more creativity to people or to highlight it so yeah besides the nft itself it's a community <laughs> all right so let's um let's talk a little bit about the technology okay right because sure. for example me i've been very public about how i don't like crypto culture mm -hmm. right yeah mostly that's because of the environmental impact yeah I right know. a lot of yeah. crypto it's arguable that the culture as a whole is pretty bad for for our world okay and it just so happens that we live on an island <laughs> by the ocean yeah. and we're in the front lines of this thing that's true right yeah but strangely i'm here today yeah so what did you tell me that okay i want to tell our viewers that uh when i first conceived of this project um before i even approached the start monsters about it the first person i went to was ko i went here to this to this studio and i said ko i have an nft project in mind fight me <laughs> because i wanted someone to debate me and to make sure that my um that my ideas were correct and my um intentions were pure i guess uh ko as you've as he's explained he's actually been uh in the art scene much much longer than me so i want to get his views and his insight to sort of take that and work it into what my plans are going to be. So about the environmental impact of crypto, I think when you look at the big, when people say crypto, there are two brands that come to mind. That Bitcoin. is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin is, <laughs> and those two chains use a system called proof of work, which is the in the, which is version one of the blockchain yeah and while it is a while it's a great technology once it starts to hit a certain scale or a certain level of adoption it starts to become highly 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 inefficient to a level that which is why you can't get graphic cards and why like and contributes massive drains to electrical grids around the world mm -hmm. And so per, for perspective, when you do one transaction with an Ethereum, it's like running an American household for a week. I, I think a day and a half, <laughs> but, that's still, but that's still considerable. Um, and that once I realized that and I did the research into it, I felt like it was not, it was not something I could participate in personally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ethereum is working to sort of start converting their platform over to something more energy efficient. They've been but, saying that for three years. But they've been, exactly. They've been saying it for years. So once I had started to, once I dug into it and realized the level of like energy consumption that these, uh, that these blockchains had, I just, I, what I did personally is I got all my money out of there and just started working and which is why we built this on Solana because and what's the transaction footprint for Solana according to their documents according to what they put out and supposedly it's been reviewed I haven't like dug you straight into all of their citations but it's two Google searches per transaction so that's okay and there are other blockchains that are doing systems that are called proof of stake which is a different way to approach the blockchain in a way that it's still you still have the decentralized ledger to an extent, but it's a much more energy efficient and much more um, environmentally friendly. So, yeah, we are working on, and I feel like because also Solana has such a much lower barrier of entry, a lot of the projects that I've been finding on it have been very interesting. It's been very. It feels like there's a more, there's at, there's a creative culture that's coming around. I'm sure I could find it if I searched in other places, but I enjoy what I'm seeing so far. It's not. It doesn't feel like it's all towards profit maximalism. It's mm -hmm. towards creativity and value, and that's what we're about. Yeah, yeah. So that's one thing I really support, and that's one of the things that that personally I'd like to encourage is if you guys can find. Um, NFTs, but crypto as a whole, um, choose them wisely, yeah. right? Choose them wisely, yeah. not, not just because of immediate return, like take a 50, 60 year 
view on these things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, okay, A, are you dealing with, with art that is going to have, um, that is going to have a lifespan, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's major. Um, so that's with all art, yeah. right? Whether you're buying Shepherd Fairies, you're buying um, what? Circle, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. is, there a, is there a lifespan to how long this is going to be interesting in the vernacular? Mm -hmm. How interesting is it to you personally? I and think then what's the I impact? Think a, I think that's a big one. That's also. a big one. The, how much does it impact you personally? Are you, you know, are you, I hope that our, the, the folk watching and the people who are planning to buy on Tuesday, that they're buying because they feel a personal connection with the art. And yep. you were saying the last one was impact, right? Impact, yeah. So you definitely, I think, especially if you're Filipino, like this is a reality to us, right? Mm. That global warming is real. Well, yeah. Climate change is real. It's yeah. probably a better way to say that, right? Um, there is an impact, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to participate, right? Yeah. You can participate, and there are wise ways to participate yeah. in it. Yeah. But make it a point to say that, yeah. right? So it's, I'm not just in crypto with all the other crypto bros. Yeah. Like, we are actually doing something different, right? Yeah. So... Um, yeah, go ahead. That, that, uh, that's part, that was part of our messaging with the project. I mean, I've seen a lot of, like, a lot of people really mad about NFTs as a whole because of the environmental effect of mm -hmm. Ethereum. And, I'm one. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I, when, when, the, when Typhoon hit? Yeah, I that's remember That's why I said Crypto for more, guys. Yeah, like. yeah. Uh, and I want, I want to make sure that with, with our project that we weren't contributing to that culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something we've been, we were in, agree in agreement with from day one. And, um, yeah, and I wanted, with our press releases and stuff like that, we really wanted to say that we, we use NFTs as a technology and as a platform because it's an interesting idea that we want to explore. But also, we were conscious about our decision-making process and approached it via a more environmentally friendly blockchain. Yeah, you could also say that with, like, paintings and and you know uh, physical works mm. right um that once they're created there's no environmental impact after but that's not true either like you do need to store your artwork well yeah you need to have acid free environments low oxygen right if you want things to last for generations yeah. so the lifespan on a server it is yeah it you know it's it, it's an in, it's an interesting balance that you have that one has to strike it's just that if it's Especially when looking at Ethereum, mm -hmm. I was thinking, I did the calculations, you know, okay, if you're going to release 2,000 pieces, and so I really, that's 2,000 transactions times two, because mm -hmm. you need to create it, and then you're selling it, mm -hmm. so that's 4,000 transactions, powering 4,000 households for a day and a half. It's crazy. Yep. And when you start looking at the digital space and thinking about how often that can get repeated ad nauseum, it it adds up a lot and you might be thinking or oh, somebody at home might be thinking to themselves well you know i do all these other things that uh that generate i have a carbon footprint mm -hmm. and that's true and i think you should be conscious of it in your day-to-day -day life in mm -hmm. general i mean that's why we segregate that's why we recycle that's why we do all these things to minimize our footprint but be conscious of how you consume <laughs> yeah because one person multiplied by a million a million hundred million it adds up guys yeah and I, again i've known power a really long time <laughs> like and like 67 years now i think <laughs> like i remember when we first met you were super averse to collecting anything oh well that has other reasons <laughs> it's more because that's because like my house used to flood yeah. And therefore... Ondoy, I, right? Yeah, Ondoy was pretty bad. And yeah. my collections, the collections that I used to have would often get like, washed away in the flood. But and, uh, that's one of the nice things about having it distributed, yeah. right? Having it on a platform is that you can have an asset mm -hmm. that isn't in your house. Yeah. So maybe if you're in a location where you can't store tons of artwork, yeah. right? Or you can't store tons of comic books, magic cards, whatever it is you collect, Here's a new thing that you can collect that's yeah. in the cloud. Yeah, yeah. 
that's true. That's true. Yeah. I actually feel like although like over the past month or so with like work, like, we've been dealing with art galleries, we've been dealing with art collectors. We've been we've had our own community talking about their stuff, and I've been diving a little bit into it. Hell, we're producing stuff. Mm-hmm. I really kind of want a physical collection now. <laughs> like I really feel it, like tickling the back of my brain. Like man, I need to get some stuff. Yeah, it's really nice. I yeah, mean, like... yeah. Although in my house, uh, a couple of weeks back, we were showing off like art collections mm-hmm. um, in in their server, and I, so I went around my house taking pictures of the stuff that I had. And I realized like. There was one of the things I bought had come from Hidden Space. Yep. One of the things I bought, one of the things I have was a Christmas gift from you. Mm-hmm. The monkey with the. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The monkey. And that was from Culture Cartel. Yeah, yeah. I picked yeah, that up yeah, the yeah, first yeah, show at yeah, Culture yeah. Cartel in Singapore, and which the second Culture Cartel, the three of us were uh, on a plane. We all went there together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coming home for sure. Coming home for sure. And then um, the other piece was one from, was one I had picked up from Miggy's um, studio show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, good shit, <laughs> good stuff. I, I am happy that I have the art I do in the house. I think I want to diversify it a little bit from like stuff on the wall to stuff I can kind of play with, tinker around with. Yep. But yeah, it's coming. It's coming. And that's important to any collection is that it's very well diversified, mm. right? So, with that in mind, independent of monster mayhem, mm-hmm. right? What's in the future for Parasonic? Oh. In terms of like diversifying your my art portfolio, <laughs> no, no, your art <laughs> offerings. My art offerings. Oh, okay. For other people who want to diversify in terms of like NFTs, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy twelve Monster Mayhem's. Oh, you, yeah. you can. Why not? Right? If you why want not? To, why not? But if that's a, if you know, you don't want to have only one thing. Yeah. So yeah. what's coming up in the pipeline that? Maybe well, people can look forward to. I, <laughs> I have a couple of projects that I'm playing around with in my head. Um, but for the meantime, I have, at least for the next, until like June and July, I, I, am, working on, I am working on this um, to, I'm working on this to sustain it. I am, I'm really working to cultivate how our own in-house, um, our own in-house community. And we've been talking about making, like, with our Twitch right now, it's called Mayhem Dao. Mm-hmm. We've been joking that that's a uh, decentralized artist organization. Mm-hmm. And we're thinking, we're looking at using that as a platform to, um, like, a media platform to talk to people, to talk about ideas, and mm-hmm. to discuss stuff with people. And that's a creative endeavor in itself. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Art wise, I don't know, there's like a, I have like a million things brewing, but I'm only ready to talk about it when it's there. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that, Direct, are we going to wrap this segment up? All right. So if you want to know more about uh, Monster Mayhem, you're already in the right place <laughs> at yeah. the launch party. Um, but also follow Disart Monsters on Instagram. We'll get to talk to him a bit later. You're going to talk with, uh, with the, our host, our host Sanya is going to talk with Distort, um in a bit. Uh, if you want to see some of the, if you want to come visit this thing, <laughs> this mural, uh, it's here on the wall here in Honeycomb. You can come visit us. We're open uh, seven days a week. We accept out, you know, outside walk-ins from like 8.30 to, we're open till 10.30. So 8.30 in the morning, 10.30 p.m. And uh, you can just send me a DM on Instagram to book because we don't really do walk-in walk-ins. You do have to book. Um, but yeah, come. you can come see the mural in person. Right, you can uh, get some come, good coffee. Get some good coffee. See some of the other artwork here. So, shout out to Mumbot, of course, and Secret Fresh, um, Wetworks, to Circle, the skateboard and the uh, the megaphone, um, RIP Virtual Ablo. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff here. We got giant, some uh, the giant. Tech yeah, we got some Science Shepherd Fairy um, uh-huh. lithographs here. If you guys ever want, yeah, Quicks. <laughs> shout out to Quicks who was uh, who the was in the picture. Line. Yeah, if you want ever want to come by. Do some art appreciation, talk with us, have some coffee, get some work done. You can always come here, visit us in Honeycomb. We are in Double Dragon Plaza, Edsa Corner, Makapagal uh, Boulevard in the Reclamation, the, Mo- the MOA area is what most people know it as. So thank you so much for this chat, pal. And thank you for hosting us today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with that, back to you. <laughs>